This is George from iTech Legion. Since day one of all-in-one liquid coolers, all the attention has gone to CPUs. Uh, very rarely do you see any attention given to GPUs whatsoever in terms of all-in-ones. Uh, stands to reason simply because people have been overclocking CPUs since day one, and overclocking GPUs has become a recent phenomenon. Uh, also, only recently have we seen both AMD and NVIDIA using boost clocks that are actually throttled in uh, accordance with temperature. This makes keeping your GPU cool all the more important when you're looking for top performance. Now, today we're going to take a look at a piece from NZXT, the Kraken G10, which allows you to adapt any Ace Tech made all-in-one liquid cooler to your GPU and also has VRM cooling included. Now, something to keep in mind. The Kraken G10 is an adapter. It is not a cooler in itself. As I say, it allows you to adapt an Acetec all-in-one liquid cooler to many different GPUs. Now, taking a quick look at the box, you get a quick look at the way it looks when it's installed on the card. As you can see, the uh, G10 itself is actually a very, very simple device, very simple adapter. Moving around the back of the box, uh, they do give you some numbers using um, the G10 with the Kraken X40 uh, comparison numbers between a GTX 780 with a reference cooler and using the G10 with an X40, um, you do see an increase of about 40% as it um, is what NZXT is claiming here. Uh, top C, easy installation. Zip tie points included for your tubing to make a very neat installation. 92 millimeter fan included for the VRM cooling, very important. Uh, as we've seen people adapt all-in-one liquid coolers to GPUs in the past. The big problem has been no VRM cooling and that obviously is going to be a problem. It is uh, compatible with 19 different all-in-one liquid coolers and 24 different GPUs. And you do get a listing over on the side of the GPUs it is compatible with, which is uh, GTX 780, 770, 760, the Titan 680, 670, 660 Ti, 580, 570, 560 Ti, 560, and the 560 SE. Over on the AMD side, um, you do have some errors over here. It does not list the 290, 290X, and 280X, which are compatible. It does, however, list the 8870, 7870, 7850, 6970, 6950, 6870, 6850, uh, 6790, 6770, 5870, 5850, and uh, the 5830. So you do have a great amount of compatibility there. Um, as far as the all-in-one liquid coolers also listed here, the two NZXT pieces, the X40, X60, uh, Corsair, only the Ace Tech made pieces, the H110, H90, H55, H50, Antec 620, 6, uh, 620 and 920, and their variations. Um, Thermal take all of the water 2.0 and 3.0, as well as the Zalman 320, 315, and 310. Now, taking a look at the unit itself, like I say, simple piece, simple bracket adapter, as you can see here, comes in red, black, or white, the traditional Phantom colors with the NZXT logo on the side. You do have, as you see on the sides, tie down points for your tubing so you can wrap your tubing through without much of a problem. Keep it tied down in one place, keep it nice and neat. You get a matching back plate with the NZXT logo and the 92 millimeter fan. Taking a look at the included accessories, first off, start out nicely laid out manual, well illustrated as you see. One big thing to point out here, in big red lettering up top, there is no thermal paste included in this kit. You do need to bring your own thermal paste uh, for the installation. But as you can see, manual is well laid out, easy to follow, installation itself looks not very difficult at all. Moving on, six zip ties are included for tying down your um, tubing, two rubber pads, four bolts, four nuts, four spacers, and four fan screws for the 92 millimeter uh, fan. One of NZXT's promises on the G10 is an easy installation, so let's get to it. First off, we're gonna start with the plate itself, the adapter plate, and as you can see, really, it's a beautiful piece and has beautiful finish on it. NZXT really does a nice job with their paint. However, that is going to cause a little bit of a problem, but only in um, certain circumstances, which you'll see in a couple of minutes when we get to it, some overspray into uh, some of the holes. So first step, we are going to put the fan on. Very important. You want to make sure the NZXT logo facing up. Your fan is going to be set to exhaust up and out. 
as you see here. And you'll just line up your four holes and four screws will go in to hold the fan into place. Now that we've got the fan in place, as you can see, we're going to turn it over and two rubber foam pads have an adhesive backing. Move the backing and it will go in the two corners. You might want to just clear that screw hole in case you need to get to it. On the far side of the fan. Now we're ready to start getting the uh, AIO cooler into place. Now, if you recall, I did say that there was a little bit of an issue that you would be experiencing because of the uh, paint on the bracket itself for the G10. Uh, the B and C slots, which are on the outside for NVIDIA, no problem at all. You've got the ball passes right through. The inside cutouts, which are for AMD cards, are an entire another matter. You've got paint overspray in there. The bolt won't pass through. You can't mount it. You're going to have to uh, get in there and either redrill or scrape out the paint in order to get that bolt through to get this mounted. Uh, as you can see, it just the bolt will not go through there. Uh, you've also got a couple of jagged ed edges on those as well. So you're going to have to take a little time, get the paint out of there in order for the bolt to pass through. Okay, now that we've got everything prepared, I'm going to go ahead and put a small dab of Noctua NTH1 on the GPU itself. Now remember, you're, this is a GPU, not a CPU. You'll notice it's physically smaller. That's also going to mean a smaller amount of thermal interface material. So you just want a tiny little dab right in the center and that'll provide you with full coverage. Now the adapter plate's all prepared. We're going to prepare the back plate. As you can see, marked with the NZXT logo. On the inside, you'll see slots marked A, B, and C. A is for all AMD. B is for uh, NVIDIA 560s, C for NVIDIA 570, 580, 600 series, and 700 series, as well as Titan. Um, now, we're doing an AMD, so we're going to go to the A slot with the bolt, coming in from the back, obviously. Take the washer, slip it over to hold it into place. And obviously, you can do that on all four. You do have to give a little bit of a push when you get right down to the bottom so that it snugs up. I want to give a little twist as well, makes it a little bit easier. And you're all set to go. Now putting the back plate on, NZXT logo should be with um, your motherboard connection on the top. And you'll just put it right through the GPU mounting holes, as you see there, and you're good to go. Next, using the cooler itself, as you can see, the Ace Tech coolers are notched all around the contact plate, as is the G10. Now you want to line up your tube so your finished result, the tubes are going to be facing this hole right here. So you're going to want to come through, get the cooler into place, line up your tubes, they're facing straight down, and as you can see, it can no longer fall through that sawtooth that's in the G10. And that's exactly how it's going to mount. So once you've got it into place, hold it right there and you're going to mount it onto the board itself. And with the cooler head held in place, you're going to lift the entire assembly, line up your mounting screws, which is easier said than done with the black background of the circuit board and the black screws, and drop the entire assembly into place.
And once you've got it down, get your four bolts started, and we'll begin to tighten them. Now, of course, when you're doing your tightening down, make sure you use an X pattern. So you're going to want to go one, two, three, four, as you tighten down, tightening a little bit each time. You don't want to over tighten, otherwise you're going to wind up bowing the motherboard. There is no stop here. You're going to have to do it by hand. Use your judgment. You want a good snug um, fit to the GPU itself, but you don't want it over tightened. You'll see bowing in the motherboard or uh, in the uh, circuit board, I should say. Now I've got a little slight bow here, as you can see. I did have more of a bow. I did over tighten it and had to back off until it went away. So I've got a nice snug fit here. Uh, a couple of things. First off, uh, the easy installation. Well, honestly, it would have been a lot easier on an NVIDIA GPU than on here. Um, I have actually done one of these on NVIDIA and it was significantly easier. It didn't run into the problem where I had to use a drill. Didn't run into a problem where um, the snags on the uh, inside of the holes for the bolts to go through, actually, as I was tightening down, actually started shredding the um, hold down nuts uh, washers that are attached and you know I wound up getting all these shards of rubber going all over the place because you've got the uh, snags in there and a couple of them just really disintegrated the washers so um, not a particularly easy install not a particularly difficult to install uh, even on an NVIDIA card it's a lot easier but it's it's a cumbersome install is what it is you really need three hands to make it easy uh, when the bolts do come through here to put the nut on, there's very little bolts coming through. You do have to apply pressure from both sides, which is very difficult to do when you've got all four struggling to get through and barely getting through. So you do have to apply pressure in order to get the uh, nut started onto the bolt. So now once it's on, you can go anywhere you want with your uh, tubing. You can use the tie downs as we saw, go right alongside the fan and hide it if you want it going out the front, which is great if you're doing a front mount, uh, an intake for this. Uh, if you're going to go out the top, obviously you've got tons of room here. You can come right up through here, right up the top, which is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using a rear exhaust, of course, as is always recommended with uh, AIO liquid cooling. So we'll be putting it in the case, and we're going to see exactly what kind of uh, upgrade we get from the G10 itself to the VRM cooling. And we're going to see uh, what kind of upgrade that the G10 allows for using an AIO liquid cooler on the GPU. Looking at the G10 in the case, obviously you get a nice clean look here, uh, especially with the three available colors, black, red, and white. Obviously, you know, I typically would have gone with a black or a white, obviously, in this build, but the red looks fine too, and you can color code to your build. Now, looking at the performance, uh, as you saw, the GPU temps dropped drastically on both AMD and on uh, NVIDIA cards. Uh, the VRMs, though, were an entire another matter. The AMD VRMs uh, weren't too far off from the reference design, pretty much on par, a little bit warmer at times, but the NVIDIA VRM, um, which we could not measure using software, I had to measure it at the back of the board um, using a laser thermometer, and they did jump up about 10 degrees at the back of the board, and that is a cause for concern. So what we see here, we've got some great GPU cooling on either platform. We've got decent VRM cooling on AMD cards. On the NVIDIA cards, uh, the VRM cooling is definitely an issue. So you've got a mixed bag here. Also, as far as the easy installation went, uh, it was very easy on NVIDIA, but the AMD card, the 290X, we did have a problem. Uh, the bolts needed to be a little bit longer. We did have some jagged edges, uh, had some problems with overspray in the, the uh, bolt holes themselves on the mounting plate. So you've got a piece that is supposed to offer easy installation for the uh, AIO, and it's supposed to do VRM cooling. And it does both, uh, just not exceptionally well at the same time on the two platforms. Uh, whereas performance on AMD was... Uh, Phenomenal on the GPU, acceptable on the VRM, installation wasn't very easy. Whereas on the NVIDIA, you had easy installation, great GPU cooling, but the VRM temp shot up. So definitely a mixed bag. Um, now, if you are using something like a 290 or a 290X, which uh, do obviously been tons of problems with cooling, I'd say definitely go for it. Especially, I mean, if you've got 120 millimeter AIO sitting around, $30 investment's not a killer. You're gonna get similar VRM performance and you're gonna get the heat under control. Now on an NVIDIA card, 
Uh, if you're using an aftermarket, a partner board with a decent cooling solution, you're not going to see much in the way of gains. You're going to see rises in the VRM temps. That GPU temp dropping down isn't going to do much for you because you're probably not throttling to begin with. As a matter of fact, I say 99% sure you're not throttling an NVIDIA card with a uh, partner cooling uh, solution on it to begin with. So you're not going to see a whole lot of gains uh, from an NVIDIA card, but you're going to see some pretty drastic gains with the AMD, uh, especially if you're using a Hawaii GPU. So all around, I'm going to give it a silver, uh, just out of the fact, a uh, silver award, just out of the fact that, like I say, it does two things. Uh, it does do both of them. It just can't do them very well simultaneously. It's a real mixed bag, uh, depending on your GPU, whether or not it's going to be a worthwhile investment.